Hey guys, my name is Ich, I'm a professional sports videographer and I want to start this video by doing a quick experiment with you guys. I'm going to play two versions of the same Instagram reel and I'd like you to tell me which is more entertaining and fun to watch than the other. Now I'm in the game, I was on the bench. On the bench. First I was renting, now I'm collecting rent. Run it up. First it with the Beamer, now I want the bands. Spending all the back like here I go again. I go again. Outside says the chirp, now the camera phone. Told you I'ma make, keep the channels on. Yeah. Why you acting different when the camera's Why on? You Why you acting different like your paper long? That was good. Really good, in fact. But was it better than this? Uh, if I take the job, bet I'll get it done. I, get it done. I said it before, I'm a one-on-one. Oh, one -on -one. I just touch the ones, only wearing ones. If you want to kick the funds, money made me come. Run it. Diamonds on your neck, bet they on your neck. They on your neck. You want that watch, you better rock it. Better rock it you want that chain, you better cop a vest. You want that check, but you make it stretch. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you think that the extra sound design makes the video better or not, in your opinion. And if it does, well, you're in luck, because back by popular demand is Mr. Basketball Edits for the Gram himself, Peter Sorellis. He's the creator behind the masterpiece we just watched, and he's here today to take us through the sound design of this Instagram reel, step by step. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over in detail my sound design process for basketball videos on Instagram. I'm gonna start with a video that doesn't have any sound design done at all, and I'm gonna go over some of the sound effects that I use, where I get them, how I mix them, and by the end of this video, you should have a good idea of how to elevate the audio of your basketball videos. All right, so I have this video here. We can um, play through once or show it on the screen here. And right now it has no sound design done to it. If we look at the audio tracks here, I have the song that I've picked for this, which because I'm posting this video on Instagram Reels, isn't a song that I can play here on YouTube because it is copyrighted, but for Instagram Reels, it's usable. So I've got this song muted but that's okay because I don't usually do sound design for my basketball videos with the music on anyways. I'll get more into that later. And then I also have all the cam audio here. So all the audio that was just natively with every single video clip. I this scroll through, you can hear it while I'm talking. It's just like the crowd cheering. And that's all I have so far. Besides that, there's no other audio. So I'm gonna start this by just going through the audio right here that was initially with the camera. I'm gonna see what of it is usable, what of this audio I don't wanna use, and kind of give it easy transitions in and out, make sure it all fades together well, and then we'll get into adding additional sound effects after that. First though, before we even do that, I should talk about what this panel is. So this panel is the audio track mixer. This is where you can control the levels on every single individual audio layer. If you wanna to get to this panel, you hit shift six, that's the shortcut to bring this up. And then you'll the audio track mixer will automatically open. So I'll just go to something else here and go shift six, audio track mixer. Don't confuse it with the audio clip mixer, which is shift nine. This isn't what you want. You want the audio track mixer, shift six. Cause then that also gives you the option to add different audio effects here, like reverb, noise reduction, parametric equalizer, etc. So anyways, let's start going through the cam audio here and I'm going to start evening this out and seeing what I can keep in and what I have to get rid of. So this crowd cheer wasn't bad. Don't really want that. That's kind of good, there's a whistle, it says the guy's name, I kind of want to keep that in there, so we will. Let's see what this clip is. Oh, okay, that audio is all peaking. That needs to go. By the way, what I'm doing here, I'm not deleting the audio, I'm just keeping it for reference. I'm clicking Command E to toggle the enable or disable on that specific layer. So when I click Command E and it gets grayed out, that means that this doesn't play anymore. If I solo it and click through, you'll see that there's no audio. If I click Command E, then it lights up again, like that. And I play through and you can hear it. But this audio is peaking, so I'd rather not use that audio. We'll use this instead. Let's unsolo that. Let a band do for three. Kind of like right here, where I want to stop it. So let's fade this out, hold command, click twice, drag a point down. 
You can also hit Command Shift D and it'll add an auto crossfade out. But I like doing my crossfade of two points because I can kind of control them. If I hold Command again and click on a point, it gives me like this Bezier curve. And I can like pull these and kind of like control how the fade happens. So I like to have that extra control versus adding the default crossfade. But if you don't want to add a crossfade like this, Command Shift D works fine as well for adding a quick little fade. And we just undo that and we'll keep it moving here. That would be pretty good. I like how the rim hit is pretty well recorded and already in here. So I'm going to keep this audio track in. That was all pretty good. Let's just select all these and Command Shift D, crossfade between all of them and get rid of the one on the end here. There's gonna be a lot of me like going through, just listening to stuff. There's not much talking that can be done in these parts. You just need to like take it all in. Here, I'll get rid of this because this audio plays back twice since this is just the same play from two different angles and I kind of cut backwards a few frames. So you can see here, he's like coming down already from his jump and then here is like going up. So the same audio happens twice. So let's just unlink these with Command L, drag this audio through. And this right here is the end of the video, so I'll just let that fade out and cross these. That's fine. I don't know why the audio seems to jump here. Maybe a new clip started or something, but let's just fade this out. We'll add more crowd noise in later, so I'm not too worried. This is just making use of the usable camera audio that we have. And we'll get rid of these, don't know what those are. Cool. Now let's start adding some of our own sound effects now that we have the um, camera audio sorted. So the sound effects pack that I use when I'm sound designing is the Ty Rogers basketball sound effects pack. It is pretty good because it has a lot of different types of sound effects specifically for basketball videos. There's like a few different types of dribbles. There are like swish sounds, dunk sounds, crowd reactions. I think there's some stuff in there that's not really necessary, but so I, there's a lot of sound effects in that pack that I don't use, but the ones that I do use, I use all the time and they're pretty useful. So I'd recommend checking that out if you're gonna be making basketball videos on a consistent basis. So let me go and pull that up right now. Basketball SFX pack, let's open that into a new tab here. And I'm going to go into my audio track mixer and make different layers and call them different names so I know where all of my sound effects are going. I like putting all the different types of sound effects in a layer of their own because then I can control the audio of that specific type of sound later. So all the dribble effects will go on a layer, the slam dunk effects will go on a layer, swish effects will go on a layer, and everything will be controlled individually and I'll set the levels for all of it. So let's call this one cam audio. We've already done that. Then here we can go dribble and we will do let's make this rim hit swish dunk and then we'll go crowd one crowd two and this will be like just miscellaneous effects so we'll go effect one Effects two, effects three, and this will be for things that like aren't basketball related, but are just like other effects that help add to the whole video, like whoosh effects or paper rips or like earthquake effects or anything like that that we want to add that's like additional to what's actually happening on the screen. Also, in case you don't have as many audio layers as I have right now, come to where my cursor is on the screen right now, right click and just click add track if you want to add a single track or if you want to add more than one track, you click add tracks and then you can choose how many audio and video tracks you want to add. Let's say I wanted to add five tracks. I would just hit five here for audio. And if I didn't want any video tracks, I would hit zero. And then I would just click okay and it would add five audio tracks for me. So that's how you can get this many tracks. Anyways, so let's now hold option and plus to kind of make, let's see this whole option and minus to even these all out and then option plus to make our audio tracks all bigger. And now we can see all the names for each of them. So in the little pack that I have here, I'm going to search for the word dribble 
and I'll grab a dribbling sound effects pack that I like. Pretty good. I'm dragging this onto my timeline here, just so I have it. And I'm actually going to, well, let's go back to this. I'm actually gonna disable that for a second, and I'm gonna start scrolling through here. And every single time I see a dribble, I'm going to put down a marker. Let's drop the resolution of this to half so we can scrub through a little faster. And every dribble I see, I'm gonna put down a little dribble effect. So there's a dribble right there. So let's keep this dribbling effect there, turn that on, and just fade it out. It's a little loud for me, let's turn that down. Just pulling the knob, you can see the levels changing here as I pull this down. If you want, you can actually click X and then set your in and your out points. The pro tip, you highlight a layer like if I highlight this dribble layer and then I click on it and then I click X. Oh uh, no, nope, it's not doing it. Let's unhighlight that. Is it gonna work? Yeah, there we go. So if you don't have any um, of the video layers that have actual video on them highlighted like this, you see how this video two layers highlighted so it just would automatically set the in and out points to this video. If you undo that, and let's clear this for a second, and then you highlight the layer that you have selected for audio, then just click X and it'll automatically set your in and out points to that layer. Then if you come down here and click this icon, loop playback, which if you don't have, will be under this little plus button here. Then when you play, it'll just loop that plus the entire time. And then you can change the levels and it'll get louder or quieter. And you can just listen to it over and over and really dial in where you want the sound effect to be at. So I kind of like this one right there. So let's stop this. And now we're going to continue through this and we're, we're actually gonna place a dribble every single spot where we can see a dribble has happened. And we have five different dribbles here and I don't wanna use the same single dribble effect throughout the whole video because it'll be very obvious that I'm doing that. And it won't really sound realistic. So I'm gonna start adding the dribble effects and I'm gonna make sure that whenever a dribble effect doesn't have another sound effect following right behind it that I faded out. So here, the sound continued through into this next effect, so I didn't add any fade effect. But here, there's no audio on this layer after this dribble effect, so I've just done a slow fade out so that it's not so sudden when that dribble effect and the ambience around it goes away. So we'll continue through. We're ignoring all audio except for dribbles. There's a dribble. The ball hits the ground there. So we'll bring this over. Here, like you technically don't see the dribble, but when you play this back quickly, like you can see that the person did a dribble, even though we're technically starting one frame after this dribble would have happened. So we're still gonna add the sound effect where the dribble would have happened. So if this clip starts right there, the dribble would have happened one frame prior, which is right here. So we add a dribble sound effect there because even though it's not on the frame, the audience will register that a dribble happened and they're gonna wanna hear that. So there's that dribble. And there's another one. Also, if you, hold, if you have a clip selected and you hold command in the left and right arrows, you can bump it backwards or forwards a frame, which is a nice way to move clips around if I touch on the mouse. So here I need to bump this one back. I'll just hold command and click the left arrow and bump it back one. And there's that dribble. Let's grab this and just hold option and drag. There's another dribble. This one can go right there. Now this isn't technically a dribble, but the ball does bounce on the ground and it'll make the same sound as a dribble if the person just had it. So I'm just gonna put a dribble sound effect there and it should have the same effect. Yeah, that makes sense. And now here when the ball hits the backboard, 
That's also going to sound very similar to a dribble, but it's not being... The ball's not being building into the backboard with as much force as someone would put a dribble down with. So I'm just going to turn the level on the dribble effect down, but still use a dribble sound effect to show the ball hitting the backboard. So I'm going to just bring this down a little, and let's see what this sounds like. This still might be a little bit loud. That's pretty good. It's a small tap. Do we have any more dribbles in this video? Oh yeah, right there. There's a dribble, so let's grab a sound effect for that. Cool. So that's all our dribble sound effects. Now we're going to go to rim hits, and I like to do the rim hit sound effects and the swish sound effects together because they're both kind of part of the same action, like someone shoots the ball and then the ball hits the rim and makes a swish when it goes in. So that I don't see a reason to go through the video twice and add both of those. I usually add them both at the same time. So let's search for rim hit. And there's like these mixed effects, but I don't like them as much because I don't want to place an effect like the rim hit and the crowd reaction and all the background ambience all in the same effect because then I don't have as much control over it. Ideally, I would like to place a clean rim hit, then like place clean audience reaction and ambience as a different effect later so I can control the levels of them all individually. So let's grab a clean rim hit effect. This effect has two clean rim hits in it. And then let's go to swoosh and we'll grab a clean swoosh effect. And this effect has five or six swoosh sounds all mixed into it. So we're going to just go through this video. I'll bump these over a little so as we start. Not a dunk, that'll be different. Dunks will be a different sound effect altogether. So here we have a rim hit. So that's when the ball hits the rim, so we'll put that there. And then right there, when the ball hits the mesh, it'll create a swish sound. So we'll put a swish sound effect there. And I'm going to do what I did last time, where I select the layer and click X to set in and out points. And it's set it for this layer because you can see that I have it highlighted, but that's not a big deal. We'll just move these in and out points like that. And we're going to loop this playback, make sure you have that selected. And then just hit play. And we're going to change the level of these sound effects. There we go. That's pretty good. Okay. So there's a rim hit. Yeah, right there. And then it hits the rim again. So let's actually grab this other rim hit effect for the second time when the ball hits the rim. So you can see the ball hits the rim here on the back and then it hits the rim on the front here. So we actually need two different rim hit impacts. So we have these two lined up and then it goes down and swishes after that. So let's put that swish sound effect right there. There we go, that sounds good. Now for this one, it's kind of different because this one, the there's a pretty solid rim hit effect worked in to the clip to the clip's audio already. So I'm actually just going to add these two points here and lift that part where the rim hit um, happens a little bit higher so that it's more prominent. And now it sounds like this. And you can really hear that rim hit. And I don't really have to add anything there. I might add a light swish sound right there just to give it a little extra something. Yeah, that's fine. So that'll be good. It 
Same thing here, we, we get a rim hit. It's just a little quiet, so I'm gonna bring this rim hit effect up a little. And I'm gonna bring up the audio at the beginning of the subsequent layer so that it blends together a little bit better. And it sounds like this. And I don't think a layup really needs a swish sound effect. Layups don't make a big swish. It's not like a big three-pointer or something. It's not from that far away. So I think I'm pretty content with just the rim hit for this little floater. And here, the ball doesn't hit the rim, but we do get a little bit of a hit on the mesh. So let's add a swish sound, and I might bring the volume of this swish sound down because it's just a layup and not a jump shot. Yeah, it doesn't sound realistic. It's a little bit too loud. So let's bring that down. That's better. Let me solo this. It sounds like this. And that's everything together. Now this needs a big swish sound effect. It's a big jumper. It's gonna create a really audible swish sound. The ball does not hit the rim, but there it hits the mesh pretty hard. So we're gonna want this to be at the volume we've mixed it at. We'll put the swish sound down. And also if you wanna be more precise with your audio mixing, I don't typically do this. I'm not like really getting super deep into these audio mixes. But if you ever want to be more precise with it, you can click these three little lines right here and click show audio time units. This gives you all these little dots and it gives you much more precise movement around where you place your sound effects. So I can move this to like really be, really start right at the beginning of this sound effect. And if you turn it off, you can see that it kind of like jumps around in larger increments with the um, number of frames on your timeline. So you can place more precise sound effects when you show audio time units, but you don't necessarily have to do that in my opinion for sports social media pieces. But if you're gonna get really detailed with your audio, I highly recommend that. All right, so we place this swish sound effect here. I think that just needs to be louder. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Same thing here we have a pretty audible rim hit. So let's just amplify that by adding a few points by holding command and clicking and then lifting up. And I'll hold shift and select them all and move them all back. That's pretty good. And I might, I'll add a small swish sound effect here. I'll grab one from earlier in the video so that it doesn't sound like a notable repeat. Put it right here where that swish sound happens. And let's just lower the volume a little. There you go, like that. Yeah, that's good. It's not too audible. This kind of fits. All right, now we need to go and place our dunk sound effects. We don't have many dunks in this video. I think there's only one. We've watched this video through a few times so we can kind of tell where it is. It's this dunk right here. So I'm going to just go to where his hand hits the rim, which should be right there. We'll search dunk and CL slam dunk one and, and CL slam dunk two. Grab that and put it right there. And we're just going to do what we did last time, where we um, select this layer, click X, and let's just extend this a little bit. And we play back. That's pretty good. And that's really the only um, dunk that we have in this. And now we're just going to add like miscellaneous sound effects, ambient. So I'm gonna close, or at least lower the size of these layers. And we're going to focus on these here for crowd sound effects and just miscellaneous effects in the video. I'm doing this on one screen right now for the sake of screen recording in a tutorial, but I normally have two screens where I do sound design. So the audio track mixer and the video will be on one screen and then I'll have my timeline and the effect laid out on the other screen and I like editing more that way. But if you only have 
one screen, then getting to a setup similar to this could be good for you. So now we need some crowd effects. He starts off in a practice. So let's see if there's like a practice sound effect here. Maybe just like some shoes squeaking. Yeah, shoes squeaking. That's pretty good. So let's put that right here. We'll just put, we'll put that under, you know what? Let's make a new layer. So we'll click add track and bring this out, go to our track mixer and we're gonna call audio nine. Actually, let's call this cr crowd. Well, let's call this ambience. Crowd one. So we'll put the practice on the ambience layer. I'll just lower that. And we'll fade that out as the practice scene here kind of ends. Now we have this scene here where he throws a ball in the air and catches it. That should make a noise when he catches it. So there should be a catch effect in here as well. Yeah, there's a few catch sound effects. Maybe just a small one here. There, that's kind of when he catches it. This is actually close enough to a dribble that I'm just gonna throw this under the uh, dribble and then rename it. Or change the volume on it. That kind of works. So now it just sounds like this. That works for me. And we're going through here. Here we have like a f light flash. So I think I, if we just go outside of this pack, I have a bunch of other sound effects that I've downloaded over time, I'm just finding from like copyright free sources, sourcing from friends, recording myself, whatever. So let's go here. I have this one called Royal Sparkle that I got from freesound.org, which is actually a really good resource for sound effects. And I kind of like that. I'll put that on an effect layer. When this flash starts, we'll begin the effect. And when it's done, we'll stop it. Let's add one more layer to this. Command Shift D to add a quick cross dissolve. And just give it a few frames to fade in. Maybe lower that sound a little. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll add a shimmer effect to go along with that. Do I have any? Yeah, I got a few here. Yeah, nope. A little weird. That could that could be good. Yeah, it's gonna be that one. So I have this little shimmer effect. I'm gonna add this on another effects layer. And when this effect kind of peaks, we'll have this come in. And then we'll add two points and fade it out slowly. That's pretty good. Cool. Now let's go back to the start. I actually added these like Luma transitions, these like paper rips right here. As I like tear across the screen to go from scene to scene at the start of the video. So let's actually find a paper rip sound effect and add an effect for those transitions. So I've got some paper rip effects that I got from Epidemic Sound when I was subscribed to them. And we will throw some paper sound effects in here. Where does the effect start? The effect kind of starts there. So we'll give us ourselves one frame before and it ends there. So we'll stop it there. That's pretty good. Then we have another one. Let's just start it earlier this time. So it doesn't sound the exact same. And it ends. 
And to change the tone of this effect very quickly, I'm actually gonna make it one frame shorter and then click R for the rate stretch tool. And what the rate stretch tool does is it keeps the same information in the clip that you have, but changes the length by slowing it down or speeding it up. So when I click R to get the rate stretch tool, which is also right here, and then I pull, that changes the speed of this sound effect. So if I click Command R, I can see the speed is now 75%. And by making the speed on the sound effect slower, it's gonna have a deeper sound to it. That's gonna change it so it doesn't sound the same as the previous sound effect that I used. And it's a really fast way of doing that. So I don't have any sounds that seem like they're repeating, even though I'm really just using the same sound effect over and over and making small changes. So we have a rip, a different rip. There's a third rip. So let's take this regular size, this regular speed sound effect, and we will just go like that. And it kind of ends there, so end and start. There's another rip. So I'm gonna drag this. Again, when I'm dragging these, I'm holding Option so that I can duplicate it. And then I let go of Option after I let go of my mouse. And I can just duplicate that sound without actually having to drag it back onto my timeline. And again, I'm going to use the Rate Stretch tool to bring this one frame longer. Now, this is like a whip pan transition. I've talked about whip pan transitions before on this channel, actually for Beyond the Game TV. So if you haven't seen that, then go watch my one of my previous videos on editing and I talk about how I film and edit whip pan transitions together. But we're gonna look for a whoosh sound effect. I got a few from Artlist here that I got from my subscription to them. So we'll grab this one, short distorted whoosh, and we'll put this here. That's what it sounds like. We just gotta move it so that it starts a little bit later and maybe make it a little quieter. That works. And now let's grab this, where is it? I have this one one called Complex. Yeah, where is it? Yeah, here we go. Complex whoosh. It kind of does this like panning thing. I'll let you listen to it. So that effect kind of goes back and forth from one ear to the other. And you can actually, in the audio track mixer, make stuff go from the left headphone to the right headphone and go back and forth. But this is a really simple way of doing that because it's already made for you. And I kind of like using this effect during a shot, like if a shot's just lingering in the air to add some suspense. So I'm just gonna drag this effect and place it in while the three pointer is in the air and I'll make the volume a little lower. So you get that sound of audio just like going back and forth between your headphones while you're listening to that shot linger. Kind of sounds like a plane taking off in my opinion. And I like that. Whatever sound effects do we have in here that we can do. There's another whip pan. So let's take the same um, short distorted whoosh and do that trick that we did before where we take the rate stretch tool and drag it out a little. Let's bump it back a frame. Pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing again with the complex whoosh. I'm just gonna start it a little bit later. Zoom in here. We'll fade it up. When this begins, there the ball goes in. So hold shift, select both of those, drag it out. There we go. And we have another rip. So let's grab the paper rip sound, drop it in right there. And here we, I added, we have like a camera shake effect. So I'm going to grab an earthquake sound. I usually use something that sounds like kind of a vibration or like a camera. Sh I feel like earthquakes go well with a camera shake sound effect, just like that. So we'll drop our earthquake sound effect right in here. That's when the camera shake starts. So we'll start it there. 
and it kind of ends there. Turn the volume down just a little bit on it and cool. Let's actually extend this out a frame and then another frame on the other side, Command Shift D, maybe a couple frames. There we go. Command Shift D and we have our cross dissolves and we'll drag those out and we'll drag this back into frame now that we have cross dissolves on it. It's pretty good. And now we gotta go through and add crowd sound effects, just like ambience of people cheering at the game, loud cheers when the ball goes in, that type of thing. So we don't need crowd sound effects there because we already have it from the audio, but I am going to go back to our basketball sound effects pack here and search for a swoosh again. And these net swooshes actually have good sound effects for the crowd after, like this. So I'm gonna grab that and put it right down here. So let's bring this, let's make these layers a little bit bigger again so we can see where the nest swish actually happens. The swish happens there and the crowd sound can start just after. And fade that out. And now here we should have some sort of crowd, crowd effect. It shouldn't just be totally quiet. We are in a stadium after all. So we'll grab this sound from prior. Just miscellaneous sounds. There's another cheering sound that we'll put right there. Make it so that crowd sound starts earlier and kind of fills in that gap that we have. This one's a little bit of a shorter one, but I think it'll work for our purposes. So we'll add that. There we already have a crowd cheer. We could probably use one there. I'll actually grab the one that we used first. Bring that back. And one there. Loop it over a frame. There's a lot of like tweaking and finessing with this, as you can tell. You're not gonna get anything exact the first time. You just gotta be like really precise with it. And let's do one more crowd effect there because that's the ending basket for our video. Let's actually go here and search dunk. And these mixed slam dunk sound effects also have crowd noises that are a bit more emphatic, I guess. You can hear for yourself. So for the end of the video, I want to use a little bit more of an emphatic crowd cheer. So we'll throw that right there. And we'll just slowly fade that out as the video ends. Pretty good. So I think we're mostly done with the sound design for this Instagram reel now. So before we actually finish it, it's good practice to just like sit back and watch your video play through and listen to the sound as a participant, not like hunched over your desk analyzing everything, but just like a normal viewer scrolling through Instagram. Then if anything sounds like there's an empty spot or there's something that's off putting, you can notice it and fix it before you export. So we're just gonna listen to this right now with sound design not with music, and we're going to see if there's anything that stands out to us.
that wasn't bad, but there were a couple things right here. I think it went quiet for a second. Yeah, it did. So let's get rid of that maybe and make it so this doesn't fade out or maybe fades out a little bit less. Yeah, that's weird to me. So let's go like this and cross dissolve these. Maybe that might help. We definitely need some more crowd, crowd sounds in there. Yeah, this is loud. This is longer. Cool. So let's put this there instead. This will help fill that little gap we have. Drop that into there. Command Shift D to cross dissolve all of these together. And let's bring this up. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Maybe this swish sound effect can be a little bit louder. And the rip can be a little quieter. That's also a little bit sudden. Maybe make that fade in over a longer period of time. That's pretty good. All right, and now the last step for this is you would normally enable your audio layer and then set your music volume to a volume that still makes the music heard, but doesn't overpower the sound effects. So if I were going to do that right now, and again, I can't because this music is copyrighted as I was making an Instagram reel, I would click the toggle track lock to unlock this, unmute it, go to hit shift six to go to our audio track mixer. And then I would set the level for this layer that says music audio two right here to a level that allows the music to play through, but not dominate all the other sound design work that we just did. As you can see, I've already done that here. I have it set to minus 5.6. Um, I can't play you the finished video with the music here for copyright issues, but if you want to see it, go check me out on Instagram at Pizzarellis. I'm going to post it there for you so you can go and find it. And then you can hear this video fully sound designed. Um, but that is going to be it for this tutorial. This is the whole process that I use to sound design my videos. I like to really put a lot of love and care into the sound design for my videos because I think that good audio can just take the content that you post on social media to a whole nother level. If you enjoyed this video, then I actually make sport videography and video editing tutorials on my own YouTube channel. And I think you will enjoy them if you learned something from this. And I've also made other sports videography tutorials here on Beyond the Game TV that go pretty in depth to some of the other aspects of basketball social media videos. E, thank you so much for having me on the channel again. I always appreciate you giving me a platform to share and help people. And I appreciate all the work that you do in this field. You put up videos on a consistent basis and are one of the best on the internet. So if you're not subscribed to Beyond the Game TV, make sure you do. And um, yeah, that's all I have. So thank you again for sticking around. I appreciate you.